I was scrolling through Hinge with one of my best friends. We literally like traded each other's phones and we're scrolling through each other's hinges and she's like, oh, you're picking the wrong guys. I'm gonna pick the guys for you. I'm gonna send the likes for you, whatever, whatever. So she sends this guy a like who is a literally a f***ing six foot, six pack model who I would never send a like because back then I would never even think that I could bag a guy like that. Finally, after the few months, um, he finally makes me his girlfriend after, you know, some back and forth. And this to me is like the best thing ever. I feel like I have landed the prize. I have landed the six figure, six foot, six pack man, the triple six, if you will. <laughs> oh, brother, this guy stinks. Yo, what is going on guys? I hope you are all doing well. So on today's episode, we are going to be taking a listen to a story from this woman right here about the quote unquote worst man that she has ever dated in her life. Now a bit of a spoiler here, this is a dude who is uh, by all definitions a chad, so he's a tall guy, um, he works out, he makes a lot of money. And this woman, she thinks that she is special. She thinks that she can get a monogamous relationship out of this man. And we're going to be taking a listen to what exactly happens. So guys, don't forget to leave your thoughts and your comments. Let's take a listen. The worst guy I've ever dated in my life. Let's get into it. So literally back when I had the lowest self-esteem and all of my self-worth was dependent on whether I had some kind of guy in my life or love interest in my life, I was scrolling through Hinge with one of my best friends. We literally like traded each other's phones and we're scrolling through each other's hinges and she's like, oh, you're picking the wrong guys. I'm gonna pick the guys for you. I'm gonna send the likes for you, whatever, whatever. So she sends this guy a like who is a literally a a six foot, a six pack model who I would never send a like because back then I would never even think that I could bag a guy like that. So I was just already like, whatever, send it. I don't care. Okay, so right off the bat, um, she's absolutely lying through her teeth. Okay, she would of course send men like this likes. I don't care what any of these women say, guys. Oh, my self esteem's so low. I would never send a man like that a like, you know. I, I'm realistic, okay? Bullcrap, I don't believe it. Hell, I don't even believe the friend was there on her phone, to be honest with you. I think that she was just swiping through and she didn't want to make it appear as though she was the one who was actually doing it. Uh, that's number one. Number two, she's talking about whether or not she has low self-esteem, saying that she used to have low self-esteem, using that for this kind of weird justification. But I would argue that people who jump on TikTok and talk about their dating lives... Uh, still have low self-esteem, but let's carry on. Turns out he matches with me, sends me messages. He's super charming, likes me a lot. We FaceTime. Finally, after the few months, um, he finally makes me his girlfriend after, you know, some back and forth. And this to me is like the best thing ever. I feel like I have landed the prize. I have landed the six figure, six foot, six pack man, the triple six, if you will. <laughs> but I have landed him. Okay, so she basically went through uh, a few months here of being the side piece, right? Because that's what she is. When, when you're sitting there, like this is a woman who's trying to get a guy who has all of the things that she wants. Uh, chances are there are also other women who are trying to get that exact same thing, okay? So while you're there trying to get a relationship out of this man, um, I just want to make this absolutely clear that during this time, and probably still during your relationship, you are the side piece. Okay, you're a girl that he used for a bit of fun. And notice how she's happy about this, right? She's happy that in the end, she finally bagged this one particular guy. Number one, he's probably not going to be loyal to you. Um, number two, why would you be happy about this? Like, <laughs> you know, it just doesn't quite make sense to me, right? It's like, oh, I beat all the other women. I, I bagged the guy. I finally got him. But yeah, he was just having his fun with all of you at the same time. It's just incredibly disgusting to me, but you know, she's happy about it, guys. I want you to keep this in mind as we're going through this story. The grin that spend, you know, spreads over this woman's face whenever she's talking about this guy, right? So despite the fact that he was, quote unquote, the worst man that she's ever dated, oh no, how terrible. Um, she still seems pretty happy about the whole situation. 
in the interest of saving us all some brain cells momentarily we are going to be taking a break from what this woman is saying and talk about today's video sponsor Tej Hanley. Guys, I don't want you to end up like some of the people we cover here on this channel. And for that reason, it is important to take care of your skin. And Tej Hanley is the perfect way to do it. They offer uncomplicated skincare for men. And their whole goal is to make skincare something that is simple and not a huge hassle to do. And I have been using them for a long time, even before they sponsor this channel. They have different kinds of systems. But personally, I think a good place to start is with their level one system. So you can get all of the basic stuff. Inside the level 1 system you get a few things. You get a daily face wash for all of the dirt and grime on your skin. You get an exfoliating scrub that helps you remove dead skin. And you also get a moisturizer for both the start and the end of the day. That helps keep your skin looking healthy and protected from the sun. Teach Hanley is a really good choice for skin care. Because as I said the whole thing is really simple. The box that you get even comes with an instruction card if you're unsure how to go about using their stuff. And I always make the joke that even if you're a male feminist, you can probably understand how to use their products with the help of them. Uh, and that's still probably true. There's a ton of five-star reviews on their website as well, which I'll flash up on screen now. So you can see for yourself the kinds of feedback that they get. And when you become a member of Tej Hanley, you also get extra stuff like 20% off of retail price. The ability to customize your box and you also get exclusive deals and free shipping if you're inside of the united states and guys because teach hanley is sponsoring today's video they are offering you a great deal just click the link in the description for 30 percent off of your first box as well as a free gift the free gift comes in the form of either a free dop kit or a high quality dowel so don't miss out and click that link to get started today but back to today's episode to my um, dismay, that was absolutely incorrect. I did not win any kind of prize. All I won was a bunch of trauma. So let me get into it. Throughout our relationship, he constantly made me feel weird. He was always just like, had this vibe where he was always criticizing me, making me feel just really really uncomfortable like have you ever been in like a guy's presence and like you're constantly like fixing your hair fixing yourself because like he's just made you feel super weird so okay so let me explain what this is you're dating a guy who you view as very attractive and you know is very attractive to other women so what you do is you always try and look your best right so you will have women like this guys they'll sit here and they'll complain Oh, this dude made me uncomfortable, you know, this and that. But she's concerned because for once, she's not the one going out and getting all the attention from random people. She understands that she's with a dude who's attractive, so she's trying to up her game. And the way she says this is, oh, it makes me feel uncomfortable, right? This man that I was so interested in that I dated for a long time, you know, he just permanently made me uncomfortable all the damn time. Which, you know, anyone with logical sense would say, hey, if this dude's making you uncomfortable the whole time, why are you dating him? But what she's doing here is she's, she's just misrepresenting it, right? She's basically trying to make herself appear as though she's the victim and the dude's just being absolutely brutal to her all the time. She's probably just self-conscious because the dude um, is more attractive than she is, basically. So then he invites me to Miami. Wait, no, sorry, wrong guy. Okay, so he invites me to Maui. <laughs> and very weird flex. This woman is, um, I'll be honest, guys, she is very annoying to me. Okay, so if you caught what she just did there, she just flexed that some other dude invited, to her, invited her to Miami during this story, right? So not during the story, but while she's recounting it, she got confused with another man who invited her to Miami. And this is the crap. Whenever you hear this, these women, like, they think it's some sort of... Um, some sort of flex or some sort of thing that makes them look good. But I actually think it's really embarrassing for them and they don't really understand. Like, if you say this crap, any dude with common sense is going to be like, ah, I'm not going to date her seriously. You know, she's, she's getting confused about which men she's dated and which ones she's been invited to Miami from. She sounds like only fun, recreational use or not dated at all to me. That's, that's the category you put yourself in as a woman if you crack crap like this. If you say things like this, a man with common sense is going to look at you and say, okay, she's either just for fun or I'm not dating her at all. 
And um, I basically meet him in Maui because he's like working for, I don't know, he's like a gig for the Four Seasons. He's like, oh, we're going to stay at the Four Seasons, whatever. Like, you can like come be with me. Like, everything was like, he was made it seem like it was like such a privilege. Like, I just get to like be there, have a seat at the table, stay at the Four Seasons, whatever. And honestly, I totally believed it. I was like, hell yeah. Like, I get to like be at this like pet house at the Four Seasons, like in Maui with this hot ass guy. Like, okay, like I'm flying to Maui. So in Maui, this man has the nerve to look me in the eye and go, I notice you're carrying a little bit of extra weight. And instead of telling him to go f himself, I just sit there and take it and be like, oh yeah, I'll try to, I'll try to work out and lose weight. That's yeah, see, this is what happens uh, when you don't want to lose the man that you're with. Right? This is what happens when you're desperate for the guy to actually be serious with you and when you're highly attracted to a man. Right? I will hear stories of dudes you know, with their wives and their wives are just bickering with them over absolutely everything and she never tries to look nice for, for him or anything like this. You know, she refuses to make a single meal. And then women like this kind of spill the beans, okay? They tell the truth. And the truth is that if a woman is highly attracted to you, she will do some pretty crazy things. Okay, personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal, that comment that he made, but I understand that a lot of people are sensitive about this crap. Okay, but, you know, she just, she'll just be with him. No, ma no matter what this man, this man could have said the most brutal thing known to man under the sun that would instantly get me banned from this platform. He could have said that, and I guarantee you this woman would have sat there and remained. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, he's such a bad guy. He's so awful, but he's attractive enough, so I stayed. But he's attractive enough, so, you know, I don't care. I sweep it under the rug, or whatever the case may be. Right? And this is, this is what happens when a woman views you as someone that she really wants to be with, okay? If you're a dude who's out there dating, right, you'll hear a lot of women complain uh, about this sort of crap. But notice how they're complaining with a grin on their face, right? These women will talk about their ex-boyfriends or dudes that they used to date, and they'll say, oh, wow, he was so terrible. And then you find out that she was in like a three-year relationship with him, and he was seeing other girls at the same time. They basically put themselves into harems, essentially. That's how insecure I was at the time. So basically, that's how Maui went, you can imagine. So fast forward, we get back home and back into regular routine. And basically, every weekend, I would drive to him from North Hollywood to Clover City. If you guys know anything about LA, that is just a long ass drive in traffic. Um, and luckily that day, I was my boss lived in Torrance, and he was having like a meetup at his house, like some brainstorm sessions. So I didn't have to drive as far. So I was like, hey, I'm already in Torrance, I'm going to go directly to your house. Um, and you know, I won't be in traffic. And he's like, oh, well, I'm gonna be at the beach. So I don't know if I'll be home. So if like, maybe you could just like go home and then come back. And I was like, there's no way I'm going back from Torrance to North Hollywood, then back to Clover City. Like you're insane. Like, I just want to point out something. This is something that's a little bit suspicious to me. She, so she had to go to her boss's house for a brainstorming session. Uh, you know, things like this just kind of prick my ears up a little bit and make me think that perhaps she's not the most loyal person either, but I don't know exactly what her career is, but this sounds incredibly suspicious to me. Uh, my editor left a note here and he says that what she's talking about here is two hours worth of driving in total, basically. If you're not from this place, she's talking about uh, two hours in driving. Like, just leave the beach, you know? He's like, oh, I'm, I'm still, I'm sorry, I'm still finishing up at the beach. Like, I need to be at the beach. It's my me time. Whatever. Bullshit. So then I'm like, okay, no worries. I'll just go to the mall or something. So like, it's been like two hours now. I've hit every fucking store at the mall. Like, I'm just like, all right, like I'm literally just going to park at this man's house because like, I don't fucking know. I'm just going to wait for him there. Cause like I'm shopped out. So all right. So this, <laughs> how crazy is this? Okay. Hell, she might even be lying about the whole going to see her boss thing. She might have just gone closer to his house because she wanted to be there earlier and then lied about the fact that she was trying to see her boss. Um, but in any case, she ends up at this guy's house anyway, right? Before he's even home, she thinks, right? So this is another thing, okay? If, if a girl's really attracted to you, hell, she could drive for five hours in a thunderstorm to see you. She will actually go out of her way to do this, right? She will get up early. She'll go to, you know, all the lengths to see you. And, and this is what happens 
you know, in these particular stories. It's really quite funny to watch. Notice again, guys, the smile is remaining this entire time while she's describing what exactly she's doing. So then, as I find out, I'm just going to wait for him there because, like, I'm shocked out. So then, as I'm pulling up to his house, there is a woman coming outside of his house and for some reason, he has like a gift bag that he's giving her and then she's getting in the car and like driving away. And this all happens so fast, like I can't even get out of the car. So like by the time I get out of the car, I was like, what the fuck is going on? And he's like, oh my God, uh, how long have you been here? And I'm like, um, long enough to see the girl that was coming out of your house with like gift bags and shit. Like, who is that? Like, what's going on? Then he's like, oh, um, that's my ex-girlfriend. Uh, she's like, back from whatever country she was from and um she just really needed my help and like um i was just trying to help her so i'm like um okay well why don't you tell me you were with your ex-girlfriend okay so let's cut to the chase here she'll go on in a minute to explain the rest but this woman is still a side piece Okay, now I'm not saying that what this guy is doing is morally right at all. I personally think that it's messed up to cheat on people, no matter what gender you are. I don't particularly care. Um, but this woman is a side piece. And this is what happens when these women think that they can bag a guy who every other woman wants, right? This is, this is what happens. You'll have these women jump on these dating applications. They will swipe on the very attractive men. This is what all of the women do, by the way. They will go and they will swipe on the very attractive men and they will, then they will try and make that one, you know, very small percentile man. She will try and get that man into a monogamous relationship and then she'll be surprised when that man either won't give her a relationship or will just continue to see a whole bunch of other women at the same time. These are the men who win the dating game. They don't have to commit to you. They don't have to give you a relationship. They've always got attention from a whole bunch of different women. And these women think that they can lock down this guy and get a monogamous relationship out of him. Now, again, I'm not saying that this is the right thing, but I think in a lot of cases that people are as loyal as their options, okay? And the top percentage of men, they have quite a lot of options, as do the majority of women. I think this is why also that cheating statistics are quite skewed. Like people try and make the argument that, oh, men and women cheat roughly the same. I think that the top percentage of dudes probably cheat as much as the majority of women. And that's how it all equals out. I don't think the average man even has the opportunity to cheat because he's invisible to most women. Okay, but you have these girls go out here and they think that they can lock down this like giga chad dude who makes a lot of money, who's ripped, who's like a model. And then they're surprised when you know, he's dating other women. Which again, not saying that this is the right thing, but it's just incredibly funny to watch. Then he starts screaming at me like, oh, you're always so f***ing anxious. Like, I can't just like, I can't just be like, why can't I help a friend? Blah, 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 blah. Like, are you kidding me? Like literally yelling at me at the top of his lungs. Like, This is actually kind of funny. And the reason why this is funny is because this man is gaslighting this woman like the majority of women gaslight men. Like this is, this is a textbook move that a woman will do if she's caught cheating on you. <laughs> she will say, she'll try and blame it on you and say how either A, you are the problem or B, that, you know, you're just being, uh, what's the word, like insecure, overbearing. I mean, take your choice of these words. So th this guy is literally just doing the same thing. He's taking it out of the, uh, the manipulation playbook which I, I've always said this, guys. I think that women are a lot better socially. And I also think that they're a lot better uh, at manipulating on average than men. Right? This just sounds like something that a lot of women do when they are caught cheating, to be honest with you. Are you kidding me? Like literally yelling at me at the top of his lungs, like screaming at me. So at this point, I'm just like so scared that I'm like, okay, no, no, no. Like, you're right. Sorry. Like, I just thought like you were like cheating on me or something. And he's like, yeah, that's your problem. You're so insecure you always think i'm cheating your anxiety and this this and that and just like going off on me right so fast forward to a month later so she catches him cheating with another woman like let's be honest he, he's excuse me he's cheating with another woman right and what does she do guys she stays with him for another month and she apologizes <laughs> again what do women do when they're with a man who they're highly attracted to, they will do absolutely anything to try and keep that man. 
See what I'm saying? You, you guys getting the picture here? It's it's pretty funny to watch. So fast forward to a month later, when I finally get the courage to go through this man's phone, he literally like got up in the middle of a Sunday and was like, I gotta go to the dry cleaner. Like who the f just randomly go to the f dry cleaner in the middle of the day? Like I, it was just very strange. So while he was the dry cleaner, I literally look at his iPad and this man, it's cheating on me with a multiple women. He is messaging multiple women, including his ex. He is beating up some bitch in the OC. Like he is like getting set up by his talent manager, by some other model chick. Like he is literally just dogging me out. Like he has been cheating on me this whole entire time. And wow. So this is a shock uh, to almost absolutely nobody. And the reason why I say it's not a shock at all is because this guy's a Chad, right? He has a whole bunch of options. This is something that is incredibly obvious to most people. Okay, if you date a guy like this, right? And I'm again, I'm not making the argument that this is the right thing to do. People always come on here and they'll be like, oh, you know, it's not right if men cheat. It's like, obviously, okay? And it's just funny to me how, like, when... You have all these women who have a stupid amount of options in the dating market, right? They're not loyal at all. Um, they cheat on you incredibly often. They're a pain in the, the backside to deal with, okay? Because they have so many options, they figure, well, why would I treat this man good? I'm just going to go get another one, okay? But then, when it happens to them, all of a sudden, it's a problem, right? Oh, this man has a bunch of options. He's talking to a bunch of people. Guys, I guarantee you, okay, a lot of these, uh, these girls out here... If you went through their phones, if you went through their Instagrams, if you went through their iPads, whatever device it is, okay, you went through their Snapchat, like, you are going to find them talking to a whole bunch of dudes in a lot of instances, okay? But, of course, this is not a surprise to anyone. This guy, you know, he has a lot of options. Shocker, he's talking to a whole bunch of other women. And the kicker is, that was his literal birthday weekend when I found out when I had already spent hundreds of dollars on this man. So basically, um, I text him right away and I'm like, I'm leaving you while he's at the dry cleaners or wherever the f he was. And um, I start to He probably doesn't care. Pack up all of my f shit, right? Because I have a bunch of shit at his house because I, you know, basically stay at his house every weekend. I start to pack up all of my shit and I pretty much like start running downstairs and I catch him in like basically like the cross path. He comes upstairs and he is just like crying, crying his eyes out, like begging for mercy, like this, this, and that. That is the first time I've actually seen that man be kind. Because All right, so <clears throat> number one, this is again very funny to me. So this is this sounds like it's literally out of a woman's playbook on what happens when you get cheated on, right? Like if you're a dude and you've ever been cheated on you've probably had this exact same reaction, right? Where the woman's like crying or she'll like tell you that you're the problem or, or some crap like this or well, whatever. This guy just sounds like he's copied the entire playbook right here. Um, but notice how at the end here, she says that he's mean, right? He's always been mean. This is the first time I've ever seen this guy be nice throughout our entire relationship. And again, this begs the question, if the man is mean the whole time, if he's not a nice guy, if he makes you uncomfortable, if he makes you feel insecure, why are you with him the whole time? The answer is because he's attractive. It doesn't matter how good of a person he is. It doesn't matter about his morals or about his opinion of you, you know, or about any collective interests that you guys have together, common ground, any of this. None of this matters. Okay, what matters is how attractive is the man. If the man is super attractive, you will do a lot to try and stay with him. I've seen that man be kind because for the most part he's just a fucking asshole constantly to me and you want to know what it felt good to see that motherfucker cry the end damn so that's the end of her story here guys and uh you know she she ends it with a smile as though she's kind of won here but I guarantee you, this guy truthfully didn't really care that much. At the at the end of the day, I really don't think he cared that much. He probably that night he probably went and saw a different woman, right? If not, he was probably seeing a different woman that day when he went out to the laundromat or whatever it is that she was saying. Okay, but yeah, guys, we're going to be leaving today's episode there here. Uh, you know, a bit of the Chad Chronicles. Okay, what happens when women date dudes who are the top percentage of men out here on these dating applications? And notice how, again, how happy she is during all of this. She would rather date a man like this than a quote-unquote average guy who would actually give her 
you know respect and who would uh treat her like a human because she doesn't care about being treated like a human guys we're going to be leaving today's episode there remember to take care of yourselves and i'll be seeing you all in the next episode peace